Persian sour chicken kebab. Very, very delicious, super easy to make and very elegant with a lot of very delicious sides. That's what I've got on tap for y'all today. What's up guys, Abed Motasemi here. Welcome back to my channel. In this channel, I only teach you special recipes. A lot of different kebabs and grills from all around the world, pizzas, fusion foods invented by myself, improving big restaurant recipes, and in general, special recipes that you haven't ever seen anywhere or you haven't seen it as good and complete as this one. Please support me in this journey by simply like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you are new here. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's go make this very delicious kebab. I've got chicken breast here. You can use filet instead, but do not use chicken leg for this kebab. All the measures that I'm telling you here from now on is per two pounds chicken breast. So do not misunderstand by just looking at my hands because I have more chicken, so I put more ingredients. One general pro tip is having a separate cutting board for raw meat, poultry in particular, to avoid cross-contamination. Okay, in order to avoid cutting your finger, always have a towel or a damp paper towel underneath the cutting board and put the cutting board on top, and this way you secure it in place. Look, it doesn't go anywhere. Before slicing the chicken, make sure to remove this excess fat because they're not gonna add any value. Also, they're gonna burn and smoke while we are cooking them and make your kebabs look very, very ugly. Now I'm gonna show you how to slice your chicken breast. First, we're gonna cut it in three pieces just the way I'm showing you. The most important thing in this step is having even and consistent thickness across all chicken pieces because this way they're gonna cook all the way through and evenly. Look at the way I'm showing you. That's how you're supposed to be slicing your chicken. All right, this is how our kebab gonna look like on the skewer later on. We're gonna start with wider pieces, four fingers wide in the middle, three fingers wide, and uh, in the end, two fingers wide. Just like this, very, very professional. After slicing all chicken breasts, grab a large bowl and dump all the chickens in there. Put it aside for now until the next step. I've got onion and jalapeno pepper, which is completely optional. I, I really like to add it because it adds a little kick into it and I really like it. For each two pound chicken breast, you need one medium size or 200 grams onion along with 50 gram or one jalapeno. For marination in general, when you want to slice your onion, try to slice orbital or perpendicular to the layers of the onion because this way more acidity comes out of the onion and Marinate your chicken a lot better and faster. Grab a separate bowl and dump the onion in there and now we are going to slice our pepper. Remove the stem, cut it in half and remove all the seeds inside. Next, slice the jalapeno very thin and small and add it to the onion. We are gonna crush 10 to 12 cloves of garlic or two tablespoons garlic puree to the rest of the ingredients. Next, we are gonna need two tablespoons walnut, but I'm using a little more here, so I would be able to use it as a garnish on my kebab after cooking it. Place the walnuts in your food processor and start crushing them finely, but not super fine. You should be able to feel it under your teeth after the cooking. Look, the texture should be like this. Now add two tablespoons crushed walnut to the bowl. Next, we're gonna talk about our veggies. We're gonna use five different vegetables in our marination. Parsley, cilantro, green onion, basil, and mint. For each two pounds chicken breast, I need three tablespoons chopped parsley, three tablespoons chopped cilantro, two tablespoons chopped basil, one tablespoon chopped uh, green onion, and one tablespoon chopped mint. So let's go chop our vegetables. Chop your vegetables finely as much as you could with your knife, but do not use food processor here. Look, the texture should be like this. Next, add the veggies to the bowl as well. In this step, I'm gonna talk to you about a very delicious ingredient that I love it. Pomegranate sauce or pomegranate molasses. But for this type of chicken kebab, uh, authentically, you're supposed to use sour pomegranate sauce or pomegranate molasses. So um, I was able to find one here in the US and I'll put the purchase link in the description below for you so you can uh, so you can buy online. I bought this from Iran. This is the real deal. So I'm gonna use this one. We're gonna add three tablespoons sour pomegranate molasses to the rest of the ingredients. Next, we're gonna add our spices. One tablespoon or 12 grams kosher salt along with half teaspoon or two grams cayenne pepper. In this step, wear kitchen glove and mix and crush all the ingredients very well until the juice comes out of the onion and pepper. Next, I'm gonna add the chicken to the marination stuff and mix that all very well with my hand until all chicken pieces cover in this awesome black sauce. 
Finally, add three tablespoon neutral flavor oil to the chicken and mix that all very, very well. Oil does two very important things for me. One, it's gonna help the marination stuff adhere to the chicken. And second, which is the most important one, doesn't let the chicken to be exposed to air, otherwise the chicken's gonna dry out after cooking. First, I'm gonna cover the chicken itself with plastic wrap for the same reason I told you before. And I'm gonna cover the entire container with plastic wrap, or if your container has lid, put the lid back on. Now this bad boy is gonna go in the fridge for at least six hours or preferably overnight until they're all very well marinated. This kebab is from Iran, the north part of Iran actually, and they eat kebab with rice. So I also wanna go authentic and I thought the best size to serve the kebab with is definitely white rice with crispy bread on top which called tahdi. North part of Iran is well known for very, very delicious food and one of the dishes that I love and it is phenomenal is a smoky eggplant dip. Today we're gonna make this dip together. I'm 100% sure you're gonna love it and it's gonna be very good complimentary and appetizer for this kebab. I've got eggplants, so I'm gonna use three eggplants here. Tomatoes, we need three tomatoes. Garlic, which I need two knobs or heads of garlic. Today we're gonna smoke our veggies, so grab your garlic and put it in an aluminum foil and cover the garlics kind of with aluminum foil, but do not cover it tightly. Leave an area open so the smoke gets in there and the garlic cook and gets very smoky. Next, do the same thing for tomatoes and leave an area open so the smoke gets in there. All right, it's time to smoke our veggies. Set your barbecue temperature at around 300 to 325 Fahrenheit or 150 to 160 Celsius. Next, we are going to add a few smoking chips. It can be anything, your favorite smoking chip. Here I'm using mesquite. Also, the heat has to be completely indirect, otherwise the vegetable is going to burn quickly. Place the eggplant in there first. Next, we are going to put the tomatoes and finally the garlic. We are going to smoke our vegetables for around one hour until they're all cooked all the way through and gets very smoky. Look at our eggplants. They're all cooked very well all the way through. To peel off our veggies a lot easier, we're gonna cover them by plastic wrap first, then let them sweat for about 20 minutes and after that, peeling them is very easy thing to do. I'm gonna grab my pan and start peeling off the eggplants. Next, the tomatoes and finally the garlics and make sure to squeeze them very well so all the meats comes out of it. Next, place the pot on high heat and start mashing all the ingredients very well together. If you've got one of these mashers, it's perfect time to use it. Stir for about three to four minutes until everything is very well mixed and cooked all the way through together. Next, I'm gonna add two to three tablespoon neutral flavor oil along with one tablespoon tomato paste just to add more flavor and color to my dip. We are gonna add our spices. Half teaspoon turmeric, half teaspoon smoked paprika, half teaspoon garlic powder, a quarter teaspoon pepper, preferably white pepper, and salt to taste. Mix that all very well until everything is very well combined. Finally, I'm gonna crack two eggs and mix them all very well with the rest of the ingredients. Cook everything together, another two minutes, and finally, the dip is ready to go. There you go, finally our eggplant dip. Look, the texture has to be like this, very soft and silky. I've got one potato here, I'll need it for my rice, I'll show you in a minute. So I'm gonna cut it first lengthwise, just this way I'm showing you. And the thickness should be around a quarter inch. Alright, grab your small baking non-stick mold. Add about two tablespoon neutral flavor oil in there or until the bottom of the mold is covered with oil. Next, place one potato in the bottom of the mold and fill the mold with rice and pack it down very, very well. Place the mold on very low heat for 30 to 40 minutes until the rice is done. All right, it's time to skewer our chickens. Let me talk about skewer a little bit. There are a few types of uh, skewers on, in the market, wooden skewer, aluminum skewer, but the one that I have here is stainless steel, and which is the best one for kebab. Um, I've got this from Iran, so you might not be able to find the exact same thing here in, uh, in the US or outside Iran. Um, I will do my best to find something very similar. I'll, I'll put the purchase link in the description below for you. I already laid out my chicken kebab pieces um, the way I already showed you. So we, we're gonna start with wider pieces, four fingers wide in the, in the beginning, three fingers wide in the middle, and two fingers wide in the end. And you gotta lay, lay it out just like this if you wanna have a very professional looking kebab, just like authentic restaurants. Another pro tip is please remove all of these onions that stick to the chicken pieces because they're gonna burn while we are cooking them. I'm gonna skew our chicken starting with the widest piece. 
by simply passing the skewer through the chicken pieces. And then in the end, push the chicken pieces down very gently and move backwards, just to lay them even better on the skewer. Finally, remove these sides that they are sticking out just to make our kebab look a lot more professional. And also, most importantly, they are going to burn while we are cooking them. And there you go, our professional looking kebab. Let's go cook them. Place the skewers one by one on the grill and make sure to have medium heat. Also turn the skewers every 30 seconds to make sure both sides cook all the way through and evenly. Do not overcook the meat if you want to have a juicy chicken. Two and a half minutes each side is ideal. The kebab is done. First I'm gonna grab my very large platter, then I'm gonna put a little chopped parsley just to make it very beautiful. Then it's time to dump the rice in one corner and don't worry if the rice sticks to the mold so you can easily fix it with your hands. Place the kebab in the platter, brush it with hot butter and finally garnish it with crushed walnuts. So beautiful and elegant. For the side I'm gonna go with sliced onion and chopped parsley, cooked carrots, pickles, a bowl of awesome eggplant dip that I just made, and my surprise Persian pomegranate olive salad that I'm going to teach you in the next video. And that's it, our Persian sour chicken kebab. That's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoy and make this delicious chicken kebab and enjoy it with your friend and family. I wanna say one thing, I really work hard on my videos. It costs me a lot of money, but I'm gonna teach you all of this for free in detail. The only ask I have is please support me in this journey by simply like my videos, comment, share with your friends, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you are new here. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.